Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Middlebury High School, and uh, this is a video on oxidation numbers in, ter in terms of assigning them. Um, once again, we did this for, in class. We had some homework on this, and uh, so this is a bit of a review. Um, in terms of oxidation, it's showing the apparent charge of a particular atom in relation to another. Um, sometimes the apparent charge, the charge oxidation number, may be equal to the actual charge of the atom, but not always. Um, it relative to another atom, it indicates whether that atom actually lost or would have lost electrons or gained electrons. So um, electronegativity comes into play. Um, when you're doing this topic, you should know whether the atom is ionic or covalent, whether it's binary or ternary, and also use common sense. If you get an oxidation number like 15 or so, something probably is wrong. Okay, and we're going to move quickly through the um, actual... Um, rules because uh, we discussed them in class already but uh, here goes all right anything that has no actual any un actual um, un unattached or unreacted element has an oxidation number of zero um, all compounds right okay when you add them up if they're neutral okay will add up to zero when you add their oxidation numbers up alrighty moving on to number three um, any ion for example, a monoatomic ion, its oxidation number will be the same as a charge on that ion, okay? And for polyatomics, for polyatomic ions, okay, when you add up their atoms, okay, when you add them up, they will be equal to the charge of the polyatomic ion itself. So, for example, um, if you have two or three things in the polyatomic ion, when you add those two or three things up, whatever the total charge of the polyatomic ion is, they should add up to that. We'll do an example a second with that. Any metals... In group one or two, will be that the whatever charge they have, um, the oxidation number will have that charge. Okay. Now remember, hydrogen is not a metal. Okay, so we gotta watch out for that. Um, for group seven halogens, most of the time they will have whatever charge they have in as as a halogen. But we have to be careful because once again, you can have a covalent compound with two different halogens, and electronegativity takes over from there. Um, oxygen as we know is very electronegative and most of the time it will be minus two or negative two in terms of charge but um, there's some exceptions when we have peroxides peroxides are recognized when um, you have um, O2 the peroxide ion the O2 2 minus ion combined with um, group one or group two um, elements for our purposes all right, moving on to five, hydrogen, most of the time, as we know, has a plus one charge, unless it's a hydride. Now, ide simply means it's gained an electron, it's, um, it's acting as more, the more electronegative guy, and that's normally if you have some metal with hydrogen, you have a hydride, and then hydrogen has a negative one oxidation state. And lastly, over here, in terms of small molecules, okay, the guy with a higher electronegativity, gets the negative oxidation state, which will be its natural charge. Okay, so we're going to move on. Alrighty, um, on this page, we have um, a few examples. Okay, we're going to do as many as possible, and we'll go over them. Okay, the um, A, we have PBO2, right? And we're asked to assign oxidation numbers. Now, quite simply, all you do is you go with what you know most, okay? So for most, for most of the time, we know oxygen it has a um, negative two um, oxidation state, and in this case, we can simply write it in negative two, okay? And we move on to figure out what, what's led. Now, we notice that when we're assigning oxidation numbers, they're always for one individual atom. So we have two oxygens right here, okay, each at negative two, now, 2 times negative 2 will give us negative 4. Now, this lead oxide is a neutral atom, right? So, everything's supposed to add up to 0, all right? So, what plus 0 gives us, um, what plus negative 4 gives us 0? That would be positive 4. So, positive 4 would be the oxidation state of um, the lead, and negative 2 would be the oxidation state of the oxygen all right let's do B okay now I'm gonna erase these guys when we're like when the page fills up all right so we have zinc oxide zinc ZnO 
All right. Now, quite simply, once again, we know oxygen most of the time is negative two. You're done. You move on. And you see you have zinc right there. So zinc oxide is a neutral compound. So everything has to add up to zero. We know then that the zinc must be positive two. And you're done. Okay. All right. Next one. C is um, SF6, right? So we have SF6. S six. Now fluorine just happens to be the most um, electronegative guy on our PR table. Um, it's, it's a binary covenant compound and it's also neutral. So if F fluorine gets a negative one charge, um, oxidation state I should say, and in order to make it neutral, right, we had six times negative one, right, that gave us negative six right so what plus negative six gives us zero that will be positive six so positive six goes for the s so we have these three a b and c that we just did okay and we have those are the answers for that so let me erase these guys right here okay Almost there. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the others. We have D. We have Fe2O3. All right. That's D. Fe2O3. And once again, O has a negative 2 oxidation state. All righty. And 3 times negative 2 gives us negative 6. Okay. And what plus negative six gives us zero? That would be positive six. Now the thing here, right? We have two Fe's giving us positive six. So the value for one of the Fe's will be positive three. Now if you notice, right, we have if you do reverse crisscross, it works in this case. Now reverse crisscross works most of the time. But you want to make sure, so I tend to calculate these things out, even though I know sometimes reverse crisscross helps me. Um, actual calculation makes uh, it almost 100% you 100% sure. So we're moving on to E. Um, we have MN and O. MN and O. O is negative 2. What would MN be? Yes, simply positive 2. Okay, moving on to F. We have chromium nitrate. Now, this guy um, looks a little tricky, so let's look at it. CrNO3, okay, 3. Now, this guy is a ternary compound because we have one, two, three things in it. And if it's ternary, we know there must be a polyatomic ion somewhere. We know that this guy right here, NO3, is our polyatomic ion, right? Okay, good. So, what we can do, we can... Um, do it on an individual basis okay there's so more than one way to do this so what we can simply say is that we have chromium on one side and we have no3 minus on the other side and because we can solve no3 minus on its on on its own now we go back to the rule that says that whatever we have as our atoms they must add up to the charge of the polyatomic ion so the three um oxygens at negative two each okay and the nitrogen must add up to negative one for nitrate so what's going to happen is we have three oxygens at negative two each giving us negative six so what plus negative six gives us negative one that will be positive five so positive five will be for the nitrogen and negative two would be for the oxygen okay now now we have to figure out what's the chromium now you can do reverse crisscross and use that three subscript right here or you could simply say i know nitrates overall have a charge of negative one okay so what's three times negative one negative three all right so what plus negative three will give me a neutral atom that will be positive three so the chromium is positive three so positive three goes to the chromium okay positive five goes for the nitrogen and negative two goes for the oxygen okay i think we can do probably one more 
Okay, let's do H. You could do the rest by yourselves. Let me check it out. All right, PCL3 is real simple. PCL3, you've got uh, three chlorines and one phosphorus. It's a binary covalent compound. It's neutral, so everything adds up to zero. We have three chlorines at negative one oxidation state each. Okay, so that gives us negative three. Now, what plus negative three gives us zero? That will be positive positive three okay and we're done all right so you can do the rest okay on your own and see what you get they all follow the basic same pattern um you look at your rules okay you you go from there and uh go with what you know if you know what elements is um, guaranteed to be a specific thing don't change it group one metals are always going to be plus one group two metals are always going to be plus two Oxygen most of the time will be negative two. Fluorine will always, always, always be negative one. Okay, anything unattached will be zero. And after you do a couple of examples, it'll stick on your fingertips. As always, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. And I hope you guys do well um, in terms of this um, topic right here. Take care.